Pause now. This is Thames Rowing Club against Twickenham Rowing Club. This is a very, very tight race. Here, Alison, at the top of the island, there doesn't seem to be much in it. I think we could be on for our closest race of the day at, to start here. Thames Rowing Club have got, well, it's not much in it, a foot, two feet over Twickenham in the start. Again, we've got a bit of a... Both, both crews here, both uh, Tideway crews, London crews, different part of the Thames. What we're used to racing each other this season. But Thames have taken it out and taken it out about two feet over Twickenham, but there's nothing in it. It is surprising, I don't know, it's not perhaps not, oh, it's not surprising how, how rarely the lead might change in rowing. You know, once you get out there, you, you might expect with two feet that it could all turn around in an instant. But what you need to look at is, is, is the increment each stroke. And each stroke here, Thames is getting a little bit more. Each stroke they're getting a little bit more. Their, their average speed is just that bit higher than Twickenham. You can see here that they are just edging ahead or, or, or slipping ahead. And psychologically, as, as, um, as we were discussing uh, in a previous race, once you get clear water, you feel that you've just broken that other crew. And they look to me as if they're just about a length now as we're coming up to almost the halfway mark. It's just over a length to Thames Rowing Club. A lot of, uh, lot of women rowing at Thames these days. Yeah, when, you know, back at, it, I, I rode at Thames for a couple of years and at that point it was a source of a lot of about 20 years ago it was a source of a lot of um, women's squad members and it was a big women's rowing club and then the men really um, pulled up as well so the men have had their uh, successes at, at Royal Henley as well so I'd say it's a much more kind of balanced crew club now um, but still still has that reputation of, of being very good for, for women's rowing. Different experience though rowing on the tideway to, to, to coming up here at uh, Henley on Thames yes? Still part of the Thames, but it's a different, yeah, it's a different, you know, you might as well be a different, different river. Um, you've got that, rowing on the, on the tideway, you've got the experience of this, of really needing to know where the stream is, which is why when you see the boat race, you know, it's all about where you are on the river. Here you've got that narrow section and it is, the, you know, you've got the section boomed off that is trying to be as fair as possible with the stream. And we don't have a lot of water here today. It's not been hugely wet and rainy a little bit, but... There's not a massive amount of stream. Thames, as we've been seeing at the top of the pit, they're in, inexorably pulling ahead. So bits by bit, stroke by stroke, until they've now broken clear of Twickenham Rowing Club in their pink blades and pink caps. Still fighting hard, but Thames, from that two feet lead that they had at a minute at the end of the island, they've just kept their heads, they've pushed out, they've kept long. And we are now at the start of Intermediate Club 8. This is Agecroft Rowing Club and Nottingham Rowing Club. Agecroft from uh, Manchester are nearest to us, or on the left-hand side as you're looking here. And Agecroft had a good start there. Uh, a lot of power, a lot of drive, really exciting stuff to watch the start of any race, but particularly 8s, there's a lot of drama, a lot of noise fair bit of water kicking around and they are now just clear of the top of the island. Yep, so both crews, about 37, Agecroft perhaps just one slight, one pip ahead, really gone off there, quite feisty. Get, got a, a slight lead off the top of the island. Agecroft come down, yeah, as you said, down from up near Manchester. They were on a canal up there and they've really come up in the last 20 years. I remember I started rowing at Liverpool University and we were kind of a local derby between Agecroft but they've uh, they've really um, invested a lot and had put out some good crews at Women's Henley and at Royal Henley now. Yep, this looks uh, like one of them. They do look very, very good indeed, don't they? These uh, Agecroft uh, women are powering their way down this course. This is a very, very impressive uh, row. Intermediate... Yeah, wow, to have got intermediate to club. have got they've got nearly a length clear water before the enclosures, you know, before halfway, and they've they're they're absolutely stamping it out. And look at the angles on there, perfect angles. 
I did really have to, good catch. Really I did good have to up. check there that it was um, yeah intermediate because that is very very impressive. Whoa, brilliant shots again from our friend the drone, and uh, look at that. So they are at the top of the car parking area. That's about 500, 550 metres into this uh, 1,500 metre course, and they are pulling away. Very, very impressive road. So it has to be said that uh, Nottingham Rowing Club are, what's the term? No slouches, but Agecroft yeah. really have done a job on them here. Look at this. They'll, I mean, that's just a fant fantastic. And it just, you know, when you get that much difference over that short space of time, Agecroft now have settled down to a rating 34 compared to Nottingham, who are, you know, they've, they're still up at 35, 36 because they've got to be. But um, the thing that makes it, you know, the, the, the two things really that make the difference is the physical and the technique when you're that dominant in the first bit of the race. Agecroft now being able to drop it down a little bit in order to get that much head yeah. start you need both of those so There's the conditioning you know the amount of training you put in over the winter the hours and hours on the ergo in the gym getting fit getting strong throughout the winter that pays off and then as you see the technique to hold all that together under power really really good stuff here's a question for you, you like my questions don't you? So oh, you well catch twitching. me out catch me no, out no no I won't um, shortest race that you, you've done so this is, a, this is known as a sprint because it's 1,500 metres. 2K is also known as a sprint. What's the shortest you've done? Probably 500 metres. So in the summer, some of the regattas are 500 metres, aren't they? And just that first bit. So I would have raced. It's, uh, you can get just 500 metre regattas. That's probably about the shortest. You were racing any shorter than that? Uh, no, 6.50, I remember there was something. But... The reason I asked that, the, the, this crew must have been practicing that start because that was very, very impressive. So that was that was a race tactic, you reckon, to get get out the first 500 metres, let's put our foot down and go for it. It's it's always the race tactic, isn't it, in rowing? It's always the race tactic. And, you know, the crews that do it best, the ones that have the most confidence and really practice that start, to have the power um, and the combination of the technique, get the rate. It's a combination of power, rate and technique. Race number 15, this is Intermediate Club 8's. Canterbrigian, which Alison will tell us all about in just a moment, and Norwich Rowing Club. So Canterbrigian, we'll call it, Canterbrigian Rowing Club and Norwich Rowing Club. Canterbrigian are um, Oxford and Cambridge alumni, correct? I do believe so. I don't know. It's, it's interesting how, you know, how, long, how much they'll have rowed together. Whenever you get an alumni crew, sometimes it's people who, you know, live and work maybe down in London and they get together often or sometimes it's just together for the event and I actually don't know about this crew whether how much they've done together but they must have done quite a lot together because well they look again again off the start to pull out that much off the start with almost by the end of the island this is what this is probably the most decisive start we've seen yeah. by the end of the island they were length clear and Norwich struggling to uh, to keep uh, keep anywhere near in touch with them so just off the end of the island Canterbrigian have a lead now of almost two lengths. Moving down the car parking area, the landmarks here on the left-hand side, we have the Remenham Church. That's about a third of the way down the course. Moving to the halfway mark, which is where the enclosures are. And then as you are looking now at the drone down towards the town, the Henley Church is right at the top there. North-south is the direction of the Thames at this particular point and you're looking here at a course that hosted the 1908 and 1948 Olympics and by gum they are really putting some water behind them these uh, ladies from Canterbrigian coming up now to Canterbridgean are pushing away to what's that almost three lengths probably yeah a couple of lengths clear water I'd say you're impressed with that aren't you it's very yeah I mean we you know we've just seen the Agecroft race and they were very dominant and now you've got this Canterbridgean crew very dominant and you kind of go well they've both gone through let's see a race between these two crews yeah. I'm, 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 I was perhaps very preemptive of me to say they've already gone through actually because we do know that anything can happen but it's it would be barring, hard barring, barring 
you know, disaster. They they managed to, to this. The joy of it is when you can put yourself up here, and now you can relax. And this is when this is when rowing becomes supremely enjoyable. Um, to be able to, uh, you know, to be able to, now to really just you can see the patience at the catch, and to be able to feel the boat <coughs> run out, and to have the confidence. This is. You know, these are the, the, the wonderful moments that you do it for, really. I was talking to somebody uh, last week and they were explaining to me that all the hard work and the training and the, the constant slogging and numerous outings, that's the hard work. This is playtime. This is where you show off and you should be relaxed and enjoying it. Yeah, but I wonder, I wonder how much like playtime it feels for that Norwich, Norwich Rowing Club crew on the right-hand side there. You know, this is that's the other side of it, isn't yeah. it? And... Uh, but sometimes, you know, this, you, you, you come up and actually you know what you're up against a lot of the time and still it's the bravery really to come out and, and put yourself on the start against crews that you, you know you might not have a chance against. So we're back at the start of a, another race here. We have another yellow crew. We are watching here Intermediate Club 8, Grosvenor Rowing Club and Cambridge City. Well, plenty, plenty of rowing in Cambridge. Cambridge City are on the Buckinghamshire Station. That's the middle of the river. They're just clearing the island now and they are really, really having a go, these two crews. Grosvenor Rowing Club um, nearest to us. Their cox is just drifting over there, I fancy, Alison. Yeah, so is it on the left-hand side of the picture? I think, I believe, this is a Grosvenor Chester composite. Of course, both um, clubs on the same stretch of river, usually opponents, but to, in order to put out um, this intermediate club eights, they've joined forces, and again, they'll have been able to train together, and that's paying off. They've now got about a third of a length over the City of Cambridge crew. So this is race number 16, and we haven't seen too much flag waving, have we? The crews have done well. I mean, we haven't had any Coxless boats yet, we have to say that. We've had all these races, these first races have been coxed, which really helps. We haven't got difficult conditions. Um, there's really not much wind. But you it's... often see in eights, yeah. whether they have a look at the boat race and think, oh, that's the thing to do. They, they try a bit of knitting, but we haven't seen any of that. Uh, and this race here, totally fair play. The curse of the commentator, somebody has a go at jumping all over me in the commentary position here. It wasn't me, but And the it way. wasn't you, Ab. No, <laughs> I, 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 and that, that was a slight hint as well. Right, here we go. We're half a length, half a length to, as you quite rightly say, a composite crew. Grosvenor Chester. Um, I just love looking at this. Just, just love a look at this drone images from it. That's absolutely fantastic. And you can see the water there, you know, how how beautiful flat that is. It's, you know, it's perhaps not the best day for spectators, um, but as far as rowing is concerned, this is a really lovely day. It's, it's, it's still warm. You're not, you know, you're not sitting up there at the start freezing. Yeah, so far, I, dare I say it hasn't rained yet. Um, so you're not soaking wet. Um, Please don't rain. The drone has to land when it rains. The you know great, that. does it? The yeah. great thing about, um, you know, we will row in all conditions, and you do wait, row in the wind. But what you what you know when you've got conditions like this is that it's fair, and that your efforts are really justly rewarded. And so we've got some really good fair racing, and that's particularly important in a close race like we're seeing now. If uh, you know if one crew was getting more buffeted around, but you've got a really fair race. You've got two quite well matched crews, the Grosvenor crew in the distinctive yellow. Uh, going through the spectators' enclosure now, and they're getting a decent cheer. Both crews getting a, a good cheer from the crowds. Good crowd down here this afternoon. The 16th race of this Henley Women's Regatta 2016. Don't forget you can get the details and results by going on to the website hwr.org.uk. Grosvenor women have kept their rate of striking slightly higher. They're still at about 34, 35 all the way down this course because they haven't quite been able to break free from a very gutsy City of Cambridge performance. City of Cambridge never, you know, they've, they've, they've managed to hold on to it. 
It does mean it does mean if you can keep that overlap, you keep the potential of um, doing something special in that last 500 meters of a race. I always say you can make up a length in the last 500 meters if you really go for it. But Grosvenor, having had the higher average speed the whole way down, it would take something quite special. And you always wonder at this point how much they're holding in reserve as well, just watching, just pacing. Yeah, we can see here that the composite crew of Grosvenor, Chester, holding off the challenge moving now down towards upper thames rowing club and the finish which is at uh, remenham club mm. coming into what the last sort of quarter of the the race yep city of cambridge raising their rate putting in a feisty finish <laughs> it's a brave performance they've held on the whole way and they're not giving up they've raised their rate they're challenging you know, why wouldn't you? You want to give it a go. It may well be that some of these girls are rating, racing again, you'd hope, in, in different crews rate later in the regatta. But still, they're giving this abs absolutely everything they've got. They've not given Grosvenor an easy time all time of this race. They're making Grosvenor work. Grosvenor would be wanting to um, relax a little bit now and save their legs. And they're not kind of able to. They've had to keep their rate up. But still, they've got a length lead over the City of Cambridge coming into the final stages of this race. And we are looking here at the start of race number 17. This is York City and Staines Rowing Club. York City on the Berkshire Station. Staines are on the Buckinghamshire, Buckinghamshire Station. This is Intermediate, Champ uh, Intermediate Club 8. Once again, championship, Alison. Sorry, apologies. York and Staines. <laughs> now, Staines with the green blades are on the right-hand side, over towards the centre of the river. And they are staying pretty close to the... Oh, no, that was the, just the camera shot. Here we go, then. Our friend the drone has got an image here. And Staines, uh, what, just about a canvas down, I reckon, at this stage, heading towards the church. Yes, so York City, so here we might have an interesting race, we'll see, because York City are two feet a canvas ahead, however, they are well overrating the Staines Club. So York uh, City, still up at, I still had them up at 38, um, well past the island, where Staines have settled down to 34. So whereas uh, York have got that few feet advantage, they are having to work a lot harder for it. I keep saying this, but maybe this is our closest race of the day so far. That, 